Hey, it's Geek Public Radio right here on geekpublicradio.com. I am Topher. With me, as always, is Crazy Chris. Good morning. <laughs> what is happening, everybody? I'm having... It's it, it's a day. <laughs> it's, but, <laughs> it's a day. It is a day. Um, we're going to be talking Top Gun 3 and how it is reportedly in development and all of that stuff with Tom Cruise and Paramount. But before we get into that, if you'd like to hit that like button and subscribe and do all that other fun stuff, or check us out on geekpublicradio.com where we have a whole lot more of stuff that we can offer for you to be entertained. There you go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like Topher said, I am Crazy Chris. It is an honor to be back in the studio with you guys, um, bringing you some cool news, movie-related Um but we basically focus on anything geek culture. And as he said, you can go to geekpublicradio.com, check all that stuff out. Um, we are bringing you this news from nerdist.com and puck.com. And, and um, it's all over. But it is, like, yeah, yeah. Say, it is everywhere. Esquire, Variety, the Hinduist in Times. Mm -hmm. That is absolutely everywhere. This is, in fact, big news um, from a big studio looking to cash in on the success of Top Gun Maverick. Um, of course, talking about Top Gun 3. It is, uh, I personally would love to see Top Gun 3. I liked Maverick, thought it was good. Not even a big Tom Cruise fan. Actually, he's one of my favorite actors to make fun of. But, I mean, when it comes to Top Gun, dude, there's really no, you can't have anybody else in it. And uh, looks like he's going to be reprising his role as Maverick in the new film uh, that's apparently going to be brought to us by Paramount. However, there's some cool stuff in the works. Uh, or not so cool. I don't know how you would look at it, um, but there's uh, Warner Brothers Discovery and Paramount uh, have been back and forth about a potential merger, so this might come under the WB slash Paramount merger uh, by the time it finally hits theaters, but uh, that is some speculation as we get a little bit deeper into the article. Uh, Topher, why don't you go ahead and tell us what we got, man? What's the what's the news? What's the news? Uh, so it's... Uh and uh, blah 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 because i talk for a living it's great <laughs> that's a good start <laughs> the early report says maverick co-writer Ian uh, kruger is, is already working on a draft and that the film would make its uh market's return of miles teller's rooster and glenn powell's hangman uh jerry bruckheimer and david ellison are also set to produce again as for the maverick director joe kosinski he's expected to either direct or produce if he's not behind the camera it's unknown who would replace him Ooh 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 ooh! i know who could replace him who? Me. <laughs> I can do it. Um, you know, it they keep saying it's exciting news for fans, but not because, you know, not just because uh, Top Gun Maverick earns uh six Oscar nominations, including Best Picture, and a nod for winning the best sound or best picture nod and win for the best sound. It's because it took home a hot, a whopping one point four billion in the worldwide box office. You know why? Because it, it's an action movie that features planes going fast and blowing stuff up. Well, here's my... <laughs> it's like this cool formula that always leads to success. Avengers, why was it successful? Well, it had relatable characters that moved really fast and blew stuff up. <laughs> repeat, rinse, repeat. Like <laughs> Eat, sleep, blow stuff up. I, I mean... Well, see, here's the problem with the... the uh, here's my problem with it, okay? is do we really need one? It took 30 some years for them to, to do the, the sequel. Yeah. And that's why it, it made so much money. Uh, I disagree. The, the fact that it was something that people were like, Oh wow. We're going to go back to that. Oh, and it's, and it's not a reboot. It's, you know, it's a follow up with follow up. And it's, the, you know, that's, it's the scarcity that makes people want to go back and, and check stuff out. It's Name me another Jet Fighter movie. But uh, th that's why it works. Flight of the Interceptor. Uh, when did that come out? 10 years ago? No, that came out like in the 80s. Okay. No, that's what I mean. Like, a, a very, like, name me one now. They don't exist. I think this is a. That one with, the, uh, with uh, Jessica Biel. And uh, Jamie Fox. Yeah. Blue Crush. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. 
No, it's the one where like there was three pilots fighting, flying these sof- uh, su- uh, supersonic jets or whatever, like oh, prototypes, and then they have like yeah. a UCAV. Yeah, but that was in. more of a that, that was all drama though. Like, I, which I literally don't know. planes flying around blowing stuff up. Yeah, yeah, but it wasn't Top Gun. <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm saying is, is like it could be the fact that it's a nostalgia thing. Everybody was like all hip to f- see star wars come back i, I get it and but, then I, you know now that they come out really... every year it's like meh i mean they, everybody filled story. everybody filled the role that they were expected to fill it wasn't it wasn't chock full of a bunch of nonsense garbage about people's personal vendettas or who they sleep with it had nothing to right. do with that what's i mean there was a, the romance angle but it's a it's a classic hero trope right so of course there's going to be like this the, the romance angle okay cool but it was primarily fo- primarily focused on blowing stuff up and well, taking and, the fight to America's enemy. I mean, right, it was and, literally and, just a big patriotic film <laughs> that featured a a right and, and, and I don't have, like, like to use this word when it relates to Tom Cruise, but a masculine person <laughs> that's portrayed portrayed Well, then you masculine, then like I said, you know? then you had like off of the off of that you had uh, the thing with Rooster who, you know, you had his dad was Goose, and now he's named Rooster. Yeah. Um I think but the, like one the more stuff trip that made the, him, the the stuff that made him like oh he remembers his dad he's so much like his dad yada 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 like you you've done that now yeah but now you can have now that you have backstory on characters and some of the character development you can go even further Heck, right. you could kill off Maverick this could be the film where they kill off Maverick and maybe they launch a new franchise based on the other characters. I don't think they'll do that because <laughs> let's be honest, it's the Tom Cruise star power right. that really sold this film. Plus it was COVID. Right. Well, let's, the, the let's thing, be fair. People were coming reason, out of COVID and they were ready to go see a movie. The reason people liked that is because Tom Cruise is really in a jet. Right. And really doing these things. And they're really like, there's not CGI. They're not in a fake cockpit flying on a, a sound stage and, and doing right. all of that. And that's stuff. what I'm saying. Like, and I'm sure there will be some of that in the movie. I, I, I don't, but that's what made it feel authentic and fun. And you were watching a plane cruise <laughs> at, at high altitude with next to another plane and they're BSing, And then, right. you know, coming off of an actual Navy fleet or off, off of an actual aircraft carrier. It was awesome. That's cool. That is like really cool stuff to me. Oh, no, no, it know. was a cool movie. No, I'm not getting, but I'm saying what I'm saying is, is I do think it we would need, be cool twice. Do we need another one like this close, or do you, you know, like waiting until he's like almost ready to retire from the filmmaking and making uh, Top Gun three his last, where he's turning everything over, and you know he does the Val Kilmer role in in the last one, so he can turn it over. And, and pass away on on screen and nobody you know and and that projects us into the future. I just I I don't, I don't think like I, just a couple of years later I don't think it's something that that we need like this soon. Yeah, I and, and this is where I fully disagree. I think that this is kind of the adrenaline injection that Hollywood needs to. Oh no, they need movies like this. I just yeah. don't think it needs to be a Top Gun three. Not maybe not, yet. but that's what they're working on, and I'm not going to discourage that. <laughs> I'm not going to say, you know what, we don't need another Top Gun movie. We need something different. No, because every time they try to experiment with something different, we get no. It's it's it, it, they don't experiment with anything different. They just grab something else and say, <laughs> hey, look, what ruin we it. Can, <laughs> look what we can do with this. <laughs> hey, there's an IP that hasn't been used in checks notes five years. Let's <laughs> <laughs> let's reboot it. No, like Look I get you DC and Batman. <laughs> like honestly, if somebody wanted to come over here and raid my uh my drawer of script ideas. Scripts, yeah. There's a lot of old series that I have an entire like first season that I have written for. Well, I mean, let's that be could honest, totally though, be rebooted. There's and nothing totally new under back. the sun. There we we have <clears throat> we come up with unique and creative ideas, right? Um, and I, which is why I love writing, right? This is why I love when we do our books. I think they're fun because we try to turn some of the classic monster stuff and the classic thrillers and, and right. the psychological horror. Like we try to do something different. Um, but at the same time, you and I both know the struggle of, of like having to check our work to make sure that we're not 
ripping off of somebody else's because well it's not just that but you're also looking at um when you come down to how uh thing like you know i like i said i have an entire season uh put together for a uh, to revamp uh seven days you know that thing was back what was it early 2000s with uh where he, you know he was a government uh, uh, whatever that went back seven days to to uh, set things right or whatever like fix major like mess ups like you know a plane crashing into the the White House and and killing everybody in the White House and yeah you know, I, you know which is fine I'm I'm not saying like let's not do that I'm just saying that but like this is a when slam you give dunk some, you know, easy deal when you give somebody something this fast. That's the only thing I'm saying. I like it, I'm it the type of guy that says ride, ride the wave. I think that part of our problem with the Marvel franchises is, and, and this is just me personally, but it got saturated too fast, but it didn't come fast enough either. It's been, I think we're on 12 years now. Since and Iron like Man 37 movies. Right. <laughs> and well, 37 <laughs> movies, 17 of which probably didn't need to be made. <laughs> right. But no, I, that's, that's what I That's what I'm asking. Like you here. could have taken the 20 movies that needed to be made and done that in five years but or that, six that, years. But that's what I'm asking here. Like, is is like the don't wait the 30 some years to do another one. However, wait longer than three. I don't I see. I disagree. I think you ride you ride the hot hand. You take advantage, you strike it now. People are still riding that ether of seeing Top Gun back in the theater. Now, I here's my compromise with you. Here's what I'll say. Let's do Top Gun 3. Let's get it out of the way, and then let's cool it. Let's let's pump the brakes on the jet, so to speak. Let's 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 not go quite balls no, to the I, wall. I, I, Which, I by the way, for any pilots <laughs> out there, balls to the wall is very specifically <laughs> a piloting phrase, and you can... Look it up because that's where it comes from. It doesn't mean the other thing that you guys are thinking. Balls of the wall actually refers to flying. Nah. <laughs> but no, I, I I understand that you you enjoy these movies. I enjoy these movies. Mm. It's just the fact that if it comes too fast and like say the third one goes good, then we're going to have a whole nother uh s- Pacific worried, Rim or or you're whatever worried that people are going to be jet lagged. <laughs> no, Thanks, just, folks, like, I'll be here all week. You know, if it's a good series, <laughs> don't beat it to death by, you know, I don't know. Like, I am looking forward to Frozen Kingdom. Yeah. I wish, like, am I, like, happy that it's coming so fast? Not, not so much because it just means that that's, they're going to gauge how frozen kingdom does and if that works then guess what we're going to get a whole bunch of oversaturated ghostbusters stuff yeah but and it just <clears throat> it, it's the the but ret- we're going law on, of diminishing it's been returns three years. it's the, been almost three years it's the law of diminishing returns the more you have the less the quality is i agree I, i'm so, not i'm not condoning them pumping out four five and six i'm just saying I think three, tying it all together. It depends on what they do with it, too. And I'm going to be honest with you. Pacific Rim 2 suffered from writing. That was well, yeah, poorly did. written. It was not. The action sequences were awesome. The robots were awesome. The writing sucked. Yeah. <laughs> like everything. Visually, that movie was stunning. That movie should have been way more successful, but they decided to inject a bunch of nonsense that was just completely irrelevant to the story into that film. And it suffered because of that. And that's. Why I think movies like Top Gun 3, for instance, as long as they follow the formula and they don't try to do too much or build stories that don't exist and just stick to what works, follow the formula, give us another one, take me on another action-packed adrenaline ride, and I will be happy. As long as you guys, I'll give you credit, as as long as we don't do it five more times, (laughs) I will be happy. Give me three and then cool it for a little bit. I'm fine with that. Yeah, I, like I said, I just see it as a slippery slope because when do I, when do they ever cool it? They won't. You know, they'll ride the hot hand. of Top Gun Four will flop. Right, and then it'll yeah. have it'll have like five female pilots, or it'll have a diverse <laughs> set of pilots like the CEOs from Delta. I mean, they- <laughs> <laughs> 
You know, then the story would be like, you know, oh, we were doing this thing and then a door blew off. <laughs> if that's not a joke in Top Gun 3, I'll be really upset. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? The cockpit flew off. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Must be a diversity hire. <laughs> oh, that sounds so bad when you say it like that. But it's when you look at the actual, what actually <laughs> happened, that's what happened. It's so bad. It's so bad. Anywho, on that note... <laughs> <laughs> I'm Topher. And I am Crazy Chris. We will see you in the next video. Take care.